Well, we've been talking about putting our bottom planking on, and here it is spread out on the bottom of the boat right now. Now, we obviously purchased it in some longer lengths than this, and we've cut it off and placed it on the bottom here. And uh, I've just spread it out so I could understand exactly what piece goes in what spot and get the right lengths because basically it's all cut from, uh, I cut the longest piece first and then the shorter pieces we place them up, up forward. I'll show you how that's done, but uh, this stuff right here is what they call five quarter fur porch decking. And uh, I believe it comes out of British Columbia. And when things come from out of the country, they like to process it on all four sides before they give it to you. So it's sold to me exactly like this. I don't have to run this through a planer or do anything to it, really. It just arrives just like this, and its intended purpose would be for porch decking. Now, it's vertical grain, which just means that the annual rings are in this direction in it right here, which makes it a little firmer, and it makes it so that it doesn't react so much to dampness. It doesn't swell and contract quite so much as it would if it was slab sawn. And it's also less splintery, because fir is a very splintery wood. And uh, when it's quartered like this, with that eased edge, you see, there's no splinters. So that's the idea for making that rounded bead on the edge. And uh, the other thing about, I can say about these annual rings right here is this is a temperate grown uh, wood. In other words, you've got a soft grain line and a hard grain line, summer and winter, summer and winter right down. Now some mahoganies and different things, you can't see the uh, grain lines like that, the annual rings, because they really don't have them. They grow all year round. So that would be uh, a tropical hardwood, and this is a temperate wood. So it's actually sold to you as Douglas fir, but it's really a pine tree. It's Oregon pine. If you really boil right down to brass tacks, this is Oregon pine, and it's sold to me as Douglas fir. And that's exactly what I wanted, and that's what I've got here. When I got started cutting this bottom plank into a rough length for the boat right here, I had all the bottom plank and stacked up on my left side on top of these two table saws right here, all of it. There was nothing on the boat at all. And what I did was I picked out some of the very shortest pieces, and I put them up on the boat right here, and I just decided I really don't have to do anything to them. I'll probably just cut them off later. But... The next pieces I took out of some longer pieces like this, and what I did was put them up on the boat like that, and I'm at the widest point of the boat right here, where it's just over six feet wide on the bottom, and I just place the board up there like that, take a look on the other side and make sure it's hanging over about an inch there, and I use my thumbnail right here to make a little tiny scratch right there where I want to cut it off right there. And uh, on my left, I actually have a coffee cup holding the other end of it up right there, which is movable, works perfect for me, so I don't mash it up when I cut it right off. So here you go, I just pull it out a little bit like that, it's still hooked up on the other side, reach behind me and grab my little skill saw right here. And just, just like that. Now I'll set the skill saw down and take that piece and move forward just like so. And uh, it just happens to be exactly the right length for the boat right there. So basically what I've done is I just keep taking the longer pieces, putting them across the boat at the widest point, cutting it to length, and moving the scrap down to see where it'll fit up forward. So you can see right here that we've got all the pieces for the bottom all cut to a rough length and placed right on the boat where they belong. We've got one space back aft here. We're going to put a five inch piece first so that it shows three inches on the inside. And I just think it's structurally, it makes a little bit better uh, sense. So we're going to use a five inch piece, but we're going to start putting the bottom on with this piece first. And uh, we've actually arranged them so they're just hanging out here uh, approximately the same amount on this side and we're going to remark any of the long ones on the other side and cut those off but uh, this is where we're going to start right here so uh, the next thing I'm actually going to do is just take a number of them so if I get moving them around because I'm going to joint the edges I don't want to mix them all up so I'm just going to number them with a magic marker here we're going to number each and every one of these planks and uh, I think there's going to be 53 in total by the time we get up forward here and uh, actually, after I joint the plank, and they may have to add one more up forward to make up for the uh, little bit of width that I take off of each plank. Now, 
Each plank has got this little nosing on it here. It's been milled onto the edge of it here. And for flooring purposes, that's great because it stops you from getting splinters in your feet or your socks or your hands when you rub across it in this direction. It's pretty splintery wood, so they understand the purpose for that nosing. But I don't really like the way it looks with this much of a nosing on it. You know, it's just too pronounced. I want to cut some of that nosing off of there, so I'm going to take a sixteenth of an inch off the edge of each one of these planks on both sides, and it's just going to make it fit up to each other a lot nicer. It's going to make sure that they fit to each other tightly all the way across and there's no imperfections in the fit, and it's going to reduce that nosing down, but it's still going to have a little bit of a nosing to it, just a little tiny bit, but they'll fit together a lot nicer than that, and it'll look a lot smoother and more organized than that. Now I've moved eight pieces of bottom planking over close to me here at the joiner where I can reach them, and I'm going to get started edging them. I'm going to take a sixteenth of an inch off each edge of those planks like I told you. I'm going to do it in one pass. It's nothing like the way I did the framing. The framing I go over and over the joiner and keep looking at the piece and maybe taking a sixty-fourth or an inch off or maybe even less than that. I'm not doing that here. Uh, here I'm going to take a sixteenth of an inch off at a time. Now, I've got to adjust the joiner for that purpose, and uh, basically, the infeed table, I've got a sixteenth of an inch lower than the blade, so that it'll cut a sixteenth of an inch off as I push it over there. The outfeed table is not like I had it before. I've got it adjusted a little bit lower, so that as I join it, it's not touching the outfeed table right away. I don't want the outfeed table making the piece uh, taper out as I cut. So I've got a little space at the outfeed table in between that and the piece of wood. And uh, what happens here, the only thing wrong with that type of adjustment is, is that as you go along, once you get to the very end and it wants to drop off the infeed table, you get a little tiny bit of a nibbing at the end, maybe a three quarters of an inch area where it's uh, a few thousandths of an inch uh, out of alignment with the rest of it. That's okay with me because I'm going to put it on the boat and cut all of that right off. This is kind of a production way to have your joiner set up so that the outfeed table doesn't cause you trouble while you're jointing. And what I'm doing over here is I'm holding a really nice solid pressure down against the joiner. And uh, when I first start, I've got so much pressure on the leading end of it that I'm holding the other end of it up in the air all by myself. It's not on a table or anything like that. Now we're out to run both edges of each bottom plank over that joiner and remove that sixteenth of an inch that we want off of there. I hold it down nice and tight, push it over that joiner, and uh, make sure that I don't relax the pressure as I'm moving the piece. If I'm going to relax the pressure, I just draw back a little bit and start over again. And then as I finish the piece up, I'm holding the piece down nice and tight with my right hand so it finishes up and I've got the other end hanging in midair. So when I've completed the cut, I can just relax the pressure I've got on it with my right hand and drop the other end down onto the stool and my end just pops up above the fence a little bit where I can grab onto it with my hand without getting my hands anywhere near the blades of that joiner. I've got the bottom planking for back aft here stacked up amidships and I've got it out of my way and the last thing that I have to do here before I start applying any bottom planking is to knock this transom down to the right angle to accept the planking. Now I had left it at 90 degrees so that I could apply bar clamps vertically on it and keep squeezing it up to each other as it shrunk and I've got it pretty much squeezed up as tight as I can get it and it's pretty much stopped shrinking. So it's time to knock this angle off right here, and uh, I'm going to do it exactly the same way I did the chine logs. I'm going to put a red line across on the inside right here. That's going to be my control line. We're also going to clamp a straight edge across the transom at the bottom right here from one corner to the other and add a nice straight pencil line on the after side of the transom. And uh, it's just another line to look at when we're planing so that we don't remove any of that pencil line or any of the red line and we're just roughing it down very close to that with the electric plane and we're going to stop right there before we go too far and check it out. Now there's another way for us to check and see how well we've done planing that transom down. Now we know we've got it down to a crude state and we've got to tune it up just a tiny bit and we're looking for a way to check it and this is the way to do it right here. We're going to take a straight edge it's wooden straight edge. I've run it over the joiner already and made sure it's nice and straight and sighted it, and it is nice and straight. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to deposit a whole bunch of pencil lead on the bottom of that straight edge like that. Just deposit it on there and just 
just keep going around and around. Once I've got enough of it on there, I've got quite a bit of lead on there now. And I'm going to take that piece of wood, stand it on edge, and I can put it diagonally across the boat here because the whole after sections of this boat are supposed to be perfectly flat. So I don't have to have the straight edge straight across. I can have it on a diagonal like this at, at this point, checking the transom. So I'm going to set it down on the transom like that. Just rub it back and forth here on the transom. And that lead that I had put onto the straight edge will get deposited onto the transom right here on the very highest spots and just show us where we need to touch it up. So, just like that. Now we can just put that away and we're going to take a number five Stanley Smooth plane here and take a few strokes with that across the transom here. We're out to just remove that pencil line that we deposited on there with the straight edge. And believe me, this plane is sharp as can be. It only takes off a few thousandths in a stroke. So a couple of strokes, we should be just about where we want to be. Now that completes the planing of that angle on the transom. And uh, we're all set to go. We're going to strip the bottom planking off the bottom of the boat, maybe take one more little check with that straight edge with the pencil marks on it. But basically, we are ready to put the bottom planking on it right now.